The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good morning, dear church, and welcome to worship. You may notice that we have quilts up front on the altar today on the railing, so we'll be blessing those later on and collecting a noisy offering for Lutheran World Relief during the children's time, so be prepared for that. We prepare our hearts and minds for worship, and I invite you to please rise as you are comfortable. gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, the whole Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. 
Amen. <coughs> Children of God, we have a calling and a purpose. God invites us into celebrating God's grace in Jesus Christ, accepting all unconditionally, and growing in God's calls to serve the world. This is who we are, and at the same time, this is who we strive to become. We are the church, called to welcome all in Jesus' name. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to come up and join me on the blue carpet, please. Okie dokie. Good morning. Hello. Oh, more people are coming. It's children's time. Come on up. The good thing is we have children's time every Sunday, so even if you miss today, we'll have it again. While we're waiting for our friends to join us, uh, I was wondering if you notice anything special about this quilt that I picked to show you today. What do you notice about it? Yeah. What do you notice? Uh, 
It has different patterns. What is one thing you notice about the pattern on this quilt? Yes. It has a heart, and I bet if we opened it up, which I'm going to just do a tiny bit, we would see more hearts. Yeah, exactly. There's more. If, any, if we opened it, we would find even more. I'm going to leave it open a little, even though it doesn't match the other ones. I'm going to just leave it bigger so we can remember the heart. Well, I didn't ask you the usual question I ask when we start. So how are you today? Good. Bless my God today and every day. Yes. Today we are going to collect some money. But first, I have a question. Where does God's love stop? Where does God's love stop? Never. Never. Okay, great. So are you telling me that it goes, God's love goes bigger than this church <laughs> building? Yes. yes. Does it go bigger than Watertown? Yes. Does it go bigger than Wisconsin? Yes. Does it go bigger than the United States? Yes. Does it go past the oceans? Yes. Does it go to the whole world? Yes. Does it go to the whole universe? Yes. Okay, we have... We have learned that God's love doesn't stop. So where should our love stop? Never. Never? So our love can be bigger than Watertown? And bigger than Wisconsin? And bigger than the United States? And bigger than the ocean? And bigger than the world? Okay, that is a challenge to share our love that far. But today we're going to start by making sure these quilts can get sent around the world to people who need them. Have you ever put a blanket on before? What does it feel like? It's hot out today, but it's cold inside. Does anybody want to test this out? Okay, let's you just test it out. We'll do, okay, here, just see how it feels. Okay, how does it feel? It feels warm. Is it cozy and nice? It's cold in here. If anyone needs a quilt today because the air is cranked too high, you just come on up. We'll test them out. We want people to feel loved and cozy all around the world. And some people really need help. Their lives are really difficult and even dangerous. So these blankets that people here at Emmanuel made are going to get sent all around the world just like God's love. So people can know that they're cared for and loved and remembered. So we are going to collect money for Lutheran World Relief to send these quilts around the world. And while, while we do that, we're going to show a little video for the rest of you to see what are some examples of where these quilts might go. So get your money out because we're coming. Okay, let's get a can. Stunting is a condition caused by chronic malnutrition in early years of child's development and uh, it's quite actually prevalent in Tanzania. Stunted children are most likely to get sick, they take longer to recover because they have compromised immune system, they have developmental delays and um, they have difficulty learning. When we, I hear that the, such a big number of children are stunted, understanding the effects of the long-term effects of stunting it's really painful because it is also related to in a bit of different of children to develop to their potential mentally one important uh, uh, study was done by Ifakara Health Institute in 2020 and they looked into drivers of stunting in Jomba region uh, beyond uh, nutritional intake Jomba is one of the coldest areas in Tanzania it's mountainous region and during the home visits they observed that children often sit on a cold floor and with very little or no clothes on and uh, concluded that um, children instead of using the food intake energy to grow they're using that energy to keep their body warm so that was contributing to stunting when we heard about the study we immediately thought about Lutheran World Relief's quilt program and we thought how this could help us keep those kids warm in Jombe. The foods came to the very appropriate time because it's a cold condition. They have really touched the, the, the life at in the very appropriate time. We were able to mobilize support and bring quilts to Tanzania 
and we're expecting one more shipment and we hope to reach close to 9,000 children with this assistance. Thank you so much for whoever both of these children and send the gift. Thank you to quilters on the other side of the globe for all the great work and dedication and for bringing words of their hearts to children of Tanzania. It's very important. Thank you so much, Asante Sana. Wow, we did it. Thank you so much for joining the whole church and getting some money so we can send these quilts to people who need them, who need a beautiful hug of love, even from our church. Can we do a special prayer today? Can you give yourself a hug while we do this prayer and repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for your love that never stops. Help us share your love with the whole world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, everyone. You can go sit down. See you later. Okay, thanks. The first reading today is from the 56th chapter of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, and all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Word of God, word of life. Psalm 67 will be be um, read together. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The second reading today is from the 11th chapter of Romans. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. Word of God, word of life.
the Gospel according to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before Jesus, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Doesn't it feel good to be here today together? Yeah, okay, I'm hearing yeses. It feels good when you know there's been made a place for you. But when there is not a place for you, when there is no indication that you are welcome, when you are ignored or sent away or called a name, what about then? Now this Canaanite woman meets Jesus and the disciples on the borderlands between Jewish and Gentile territory, and you know she's a Canaanite, so you know she is an ancient foe of the Israelites. Anyone raised Jewish would be familiar with these stories and these histories about Canaanites. But she will help her daughter. And so whether she is ignored or told to go away or called a dog, she kneels in front of Jesus and says, Lord, help me. It's not fair to take the food from the children's table and throw it to the dogs. Even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. What's it like to not have a place? There's many stories in Hebrew scriptures, almost different competing voices about what is the place of the outsider. Is the foreigner welcome in our community? Does God accept the different ones, the ones from outside the borders? You heard three examples before we got to the gospel from Isaiah, from the Psalms, and from Romans about how wide is God's net of mercy. How far does God's love really go? Does it push past the boundaries that we humans have created between insider and outsider? Isaiah, my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. What peoples? All peoples. The psalm, the expansiveness of God's justice and care for the whole earth and Romans, upon whom does God's mercy fall? Upon all. And we say every week, welcoming all unconditionally, but what does that mean? You've asked me that. And I'm like, I don't know. It's your church statement. When did you come up with it? What does it really mean? Because we still remain in our brokenness and sin. We can say the words like, yeah, accepting all unconditionally, but have we gotten rid of all those old stories that prevent us from doing it more fully, welcoming all unconditionally even more fully 
You know, at the beginning of the church service, we have this beautiful time of being able to confess our brokenness that still hangs on to us individually and in a community and in a nation. And we hear the words of forgiveness. By God's grace, you are forgiven. Glory to God. That's why we sing that song right away. We have another chance to figure out how to do this. We have another chance to make space for the people who are called dog. We have a chance to keep getting to know each other in a real, authentic, vulnerable way, real community. And do you honestly think that being called a dog is the worst thing that's ever happened to that Canaanite woman in her life? being ignored and told to go away and silenced and shushed, do you think it stopped her yet? It has not. And so she kneels on the ground in front of Jesus and uses a title for him that is a Christian confession of faith. She is a Gentile. She is not Jewish. And Jesus has just said, I'm here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the woman responds, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. You and the world have put me in this place. You have given me this label. This is where I am in society. She does acknowledge that, but it does not stop her. It does not define her. And if you are a biblical scholar, or if you pay very close attention to the Bible, you need to go back to Matthew chapter 1. Jesus' genealogy. Who loves to read genealogies in the Bible? Anyone? Anyone? No one is raising their hand. All those names after the other. If you look closely, in the first five or six verses, there are four women mentioned. This is a big deal. Four women mentioned in the genealogy. Not the geology. Wrong word starts with a G. Otherology. Genealogy of Jesus, according to Matthew, includes four women, and guess what? One is a Canaanite. One is a Moabite. One is a Hittite. One is a Gentile. All four are Gentiles. The fact that the author of the Gospel of Matthew includes four foreign women in the line that produced Jesus is telling us something already in chapter 1 of Matthew. The foreigners are included. The outsiders are how we got here. So by the time we get to the end of Matthew, the last chapter, where the risen Christ tells the disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, are we really so surprised? Even the dogs get the crumbs. Name-calling, not going to stop this woman. Being ignored, also not going to stop her because she has a child who needs help. And have you ever met a mom (laughs) with a kid who needs anything at all? Perhaps in this story, even Jesus needed to let go of some of the old wine so he could fill his new wine skin with something boundary transgressive. I mean, the story could have been like, oh yeah, here's an example of faith, disciples, right here. Right here, this woman right here. Great is her faith. But how much more powerful is the story to see this take place? The transformation of somebody steeped in a religion their whole lives and still not getting it. Or does he? We don't know. The story is ambiguous. What we do know is the woman is bringing transformation everywhere she goes. 
And a couple stories ago when Peter, the disciple who has been spending time as close to Jesus as possible, is told, you of little faith, and this woman who just shows up and demands a blessing is said, you of great faith, you can't ignore it. The more time we spend categorizing, the less time we have for love, and that is not the kingdom of God. So what are you willing to learn from the foreigner in our midst? What boundaries are you willing to cross to see where God's love really is in the world? And who will you listen to? And what old stories will you let go of so we can more fully inhabit celebrating God's grace in Jesus Christ, accepting all unconditionally and growing in our call to serve God's beloved world? Call me a dog all you want. That's not who I am. She knows and so do you. Thanks be to God.
be seated. Today, we bless the quilts created by Emmanuel's quilters to be sent around the world through Lutheran World Relief. Emmanuel's quilters will ship boxes upon boxes of quilts this year and are already hard at work creating quilts for the coming year. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, maker of all things, you have blessed us with so many gifts, a good eye for color, the ability to make fine stitches, the skills to develop ever new and exciting patterns. Now we offer the fruits of our labors, the quilts we have made to you. We dedicate these quilts to your service, trusting that your love will go wherever each one is sent, making it more than just a piece of material, making each piece we have created an expression of love. There is no way for us to imagine the power and effect an act of love can have on a person's life. How you can use something as small as a quilt to radiate your love from us to the world. Lord, we know that all we possess comes from your loving hand. Give us grace to honor you with all of our being. Draw our hearts to you, guide our minds, fill our imaginations, control our wills, so that we may be holy in yours. Use us as Please rise as you feel comfortable. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O oh God, your spirit gathers the church. Shepherd those who are newly baptized and newly ordained in the proclamation of the gospel. Breathe life into ecumenical and interreligious endeavors, and support missionaries throughout the globe. Holy One, you created the earth and all its inhabitants and declared it good. Clean polluted skies, seas, and soil. Provide nourishment to plants and animals, and make us aware of our impact on the environment. Holy One, you call leaders to bridge differences and practice generosity. Inspire all in authority to protect people in harm's way. Deliver those in bondage. Support fair elections. Provide care for military personnel and veterans. And show mercy for those who they have responsibility. Holy One. You provide for those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Embrace people who have been rejected because of difference. Heal trauma caused by racism or prejudice. Shield any who are persecuted, console the dying, and heal the sick. Holy One. Oh God, your journey with us in all of life's tra transitions. Guide those preparing for baptism, marriage, and retirement. Guide our congregation council and committees in their visioning and ministry. Safeguard those who travel. Holy One, we give you thanks for those who now rest from their labors. Motivate us by their lives of dedication to the gospel until that day when we join with them in our eternal home. Holy One, Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share words and signs of Christ's peace to one another. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine.
As you, as you continue sharing the peace and are seated, I would love to share some announcements with you this morning. A special welcome to all of you who are visiting with us today. So glad that you are here. If you would like to get connected with Emmanuel or myself, or if you are a member that's been here a while and has updated information, we have blue and white cards in the pews that you can fill out and put in the offering plate, which is right by the doors on your way out this morning. Thank you to everybody who joined us last Sunday at the Benson Family Town Square for ecumenical worship. Here's the pictures of the beautiful day. That was super fun. We estimate that we had over 175 people and collected over $900 for hometown missions. So, so wonderful to be together. Yes. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Our next game night for folks in their 20s, 30s, and 40s is this Friday, August 25th from 6 to 8. If you have any questions, please contact Trevor. Next Sunday is the blessing of the backpacks. You are invited to bring your backpack, briefcase, work bag, fanny pack, all the packs. We will bless them at the start of the school year during children's time. Anyone in transition, just come up, come up and be blessed. We're very excited for next Sunday. On Sunday, September 3rd, we will welcome Moravian Bishop Kay Ward as our guest preacher here at Emmanuel. Kay is a highly sought-after writer and speaker, and we're excited to have her back to preach on Labor Day weekend. And we will not be having worship on Monday, September 4th, which is Labor Day. So be ready to hear another sermon to get you going from Pastor Kay. Celebration weekend, a.k.a. the start of Sunday school and a lot of other wonderful things and worship at 8 and 10.30 is happening September 10th, the start of the program year. So September 10th is when we go back to 8 and 10.30. If you show up at 9, it's okay. Just come to Sunday school. That's fine. And then get the 10.30 worship service after that. Excited to begin all of those things. As we consider our offerings today, you may be interested in supporting the people of Hawaii who face devastating wildfires. Lutheran Disaster Response is currently coordinating with partners for this work, and 100% of what you give supports those affected by wildfires. There's more information available in the narthex or online. You could talk to myself or Trevor, but we've got nice little half sheets here that... Um, you can fill out or just write a check, and we will mail that check as needed. Talk to me after worship about that. We will be gathering at the table for communion today, the table of God's generosity in Jesus Christ for the world. And here's how communion works here at Emmanuel. The ushers will release you into the center aisle. Come on up front and hold out your hands, into which will be placed a wafer. You may take a small cup from the silver tray, which is filled with dealcoholized wine, and those cups go in baskets by these pillars, and you may return to your pew by the side aisle. We do have gluten-free wafers available. Simply let your server know. If you would like communion brought to you in your pew, let the usher know, and we will meet you there. This is the meal where we are made one with Christ and one with each other.
rise as we feel comfortable. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. In the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Honor, glory, and praise to you, holy God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our These are the gifts of God for the people of God. There is a place for you at Christ's table. You may be seated.
Please stand as you are comfortable. Let us pray. Oh God, in this Holy Communion, you have welcomed us into your presence. Nourish us with words of mercy and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart. Serve our neighbors with a willing spirit and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen.